One Zambia, One Nation, you are watching the Zambia News and Information Services, ZANIS. To present the news, I am Henry Himonde. The top stories. Scrap metal dealers advised to surrender military ordinances. Central Province Minister commissions neonatal annex. Namwala Council completes empowerment package under the 2023 CDF and Chief Giganta concerned with low productivity among youths. The news in detail, Central Province Permanent Secretary Muna Mwanakampwe has given a one-month ultimatum to scrap metal dealers to surrender any military ordinances to the Zambia Army. Mr. Mwanakampwe says this is because the military ordinances are destructive and has therefore advised scrap metal dealers to be careful in order to avoid exposing themselves to harm. The Provincial Permanent Secretary said this when military personnel diffused three ordinances that were discovered in Mukobeko area. These are the military ordinances allegedly that were bought as scrap metal. Unfortunately, one man is alleged to have lost his legs when one of the apparatus exploded at his home. Central Province Permanent Secretary Mio Namona Kampui has issued a one month for the surrender of these dangerous apparatus. Pew that all the citizens around this area here in Mukoweko that are keeping these or such kind of things or these things that we have seen here, they must come forward, no one will be arrested and make a public declaration. If they don't want to make a public declaration, at least come through to either the district commissioner's office, the minister's office to come and make mention that they have these unexploded ordinances so that our technocrats, the men and women in uniform, as you can see behind yourselves and in front here, can attend to these things, then we begin losing lives indiscriminately as it has been happening. Meanwhile, the provincial police chief, Roy Kashimba, has called for sensitizations. I appeal to members of the public and also to those that are dealing with metal, scrap metal, is that you see these unexploded uh, military ordinances have a peculiar shape you know you can tell that this is not an ordinary metal you know and if they come across them they should get in touch either with the military or with the police or the PSA's office and second infantry brigade commandant brigadier general sepiso mashanda now explains the danger associated with military ordinances the, the the manner in which they are looking these uh, stores are very uh, dangerous and can be very de uh, devastating if one goes the radius range we're talking about 500 to 600 meters and i can tell you that when it does even here all these trees will be as if as if they are they've been burnt or they are dry within that uh, uh, that radius and this is not the first time we are, we are coming across uh, members of the public with such unexploded ordinances. That's the more reason, sir, we have called for your intervention so that we, we can talk to members of the public in Kabwe so that they desist from playing around with these issues. For Zanis News in Kabwe, Central Province, I'm Namata Maliwanga. Still in Central Province, Provincial Minister Princess Kasuni has expressed concern at the high cases of neonatal deaths resulting from premature and birth-related health complications in the province. Ms. Kasuni said this when she commissioned a neonatal annex constructed by Umweo in Kapirimposhi district that government will always work with cooperating partners to reduce the number of neonate com neonatal complications. Carlos Wunda now gives us the details. Neonatal wards are critical units of a health facility, providing specialty care for babies born prematurely or with medical complications requiring treatment. To improve neonatal care, a faith-based organization, Omoyo Church, has constructed a neonatal annex at Kaprimposhi District Hospital at the cost of 2.4 million kwacha. Central Province Minister Princess Kasune has commissioned the facility at the hospital 
where on average 70 babies are born prematurely every month. The new Don government is in a hurry to achieve universal health coverage for all by constructing health facilities, provision of adequate medical supply and recruitment of healthy personnel. To reduce the high levels of neonatal deaths, the new Don government has created an enabling environment to gather greater partnership with the Swedish and other cooperating institutions to ensure that there is adequate facilities such as this one being commissioned here today. Eight percent of babies born at the facility die annually due to birth-related complications. My prayer is that with this new building, we get to send more babies home that our facilities and our abilities to help our babies survive and thrive are really, really just blessed and increased by the building and the facilities within. But I hope that overall, everybody who comes through the door, whether they stay for a short time or a long time, they feel safe, they feel that they are given dignity whilst they care for their sick or premature baby. I want to say thank you to God, most of all, for his amazing provision over this project. Because ultimately, he is the giver of all good things. The district Health Office is elated about the development. I think the babies now will be in a state of an art building and we are glad that the mothers are also happy. Carlos Mundazanis, Kaprimposhi. In Southern Province, Namwala Town Council has disbased all the Constituency Development Fund CDF under the Empowerment Grants Allocation. For 2023, Namwala Member of Parliament Herbert Mapani said over 1.5 million kwacha has been disbased to women, youth clubs and cooperatives. Mr. Mapani said this when he handed over the grants to beneficiaries to mark the completion of the second, third and fourth quarter of the 2023 CDF Empowerment Grants. More in the following report by Wailinda Piri. Namwala Town Council has exhausted the 2023 CDF Grants Empowerment Funds allocation with 60 women clubs and cooperative getting over 1.5 million kwacha. Namwala Member of Parliament Herbert Mapani is happy that people have seen the reality of the grants empowerment funds. As for the people of Namwala, we are happy. But our word of advice to women and women is please don't despair. Come forth and we shall help you. Even if you don't know how to write, provided you have your NRC and plans to do business, you are ready. Because the no don government is there to stand for those who were not given an opportunity to get to school and those who had an opportunity. All what we want is to ensure that our lives and their lives are actually improved. The government has done its part and the beneficiaries of CDF empowerment funds are expected to execute their business plans. We are saying, as a council chairman, I will instruct the, the council officers, even the CDF committee, even my councillors, to monitor no wonder I do uh, invite them to come to this uh, so that they, they know which clubs have put in their money in their various words to go and strictly monitor the clubs so that they don't share the money. They do what they have planned and then later on increase the money and share later on. The increased CDF from 25.7 million kwacha to 30.8 million kwacha in the 24 national budget has given hope to the people of Namwala that the government means well. Tokane Mbesha Impongo, ya loo mutu kakweza 20,000. Kwa mba, tusumpule mao mesu. Mao mesu wala sumpuka, muku hetu pongo, umimu kupaya pongo. So, tuwalumba maningi. Cheji jintu, katuta isho miku ambela yitabuti, jila kipangu lumba, uliwa na mwala town council. In agriculture news, the Ministry of Agriculture in Nakonde District has started distribution of inputs under the Farmer Input Support Program, FISIP. Nakonde District Commissioner Mavila Sikapizia, who flagged off the distribution of inputs, reaffirmed government's commitment to facilitating a successful farming season through timely delivery of inputs. Details in this report by Titani Zulu. 
The Ministry of Agriculture in Akonde District has launched the distribution of farming inputs to thousands of farmers under the Farmer Input Support Program FISEP. We have 1,786.95 metric tons of urea, the same number for D compound, targeting uh, 11,913 farmers here in Inakondi. And uh, it is important as farmers, as you receive these inputs, you make use of this so that we can help improve the production and productivity in the district. During the launch, the district commissioner emphasized the importance of utilizing the inputs for the intended papers and cautions against reselling them. Nakonda is growing each and every day. You see? So what we don't want from you farmers, when we give you this input, please use it in a good way. Don't sell this input. Meanwhile, farmers have expressed their appreciation for the government efforts to boost agriculture and improve food security in the region. Titani Zulu reporting for Zanis in Nakonde District, Michinga Province. In a related development, Mfumbwe District Commissioner Elijah Munyope has aged beneficiaries of the Farmer Input Support Program FISIP not to sell their produce to briefcase buyers but instead sell to the Food Reserve Agency FRA. Details in this report. The 6,500 Farmer Input Support Program FISIP beneficiaries in Mofumbwe have started collecting their parks following government's early delivery of inputs to the district. For the 2023-2024 farming season, each farmer is entitled to a 10 kg bag of maize seed, 3 by 50 kg bag of compound D, and another 3 by 50 kg bag of urea fertilizers. Additionally, each pack comes with either a 20 kg bag of groundnut seed or a 25 kg bag of soya beans, depending on the farmer's choice. Mufumba District Commissioner Elijah Mnyompe has appealed to the FISIP beneficiaries to ensure that they sell their produce to the Food Reserve Agency as a flag of the distribution of imports. The one who is giving this impulse is not a briefcase buyer from Chingora or Mufurila. It is the government of His Excellency President Akahinde Chairman, which means it is a caring government. So my humble appeal to you farmers, we should avoid selling the produce which you get through these inputs which will be given to you by the government to briefcase buyers. Doreen Samjimo is among the grateful beneficiaries of the FISI program. <laughs> So to asanti la government ye tu mwane waka inde ichire manamba mwane mutende wabo e kare konse kova jimwani. Meanwhile, the Department of Agriculture has given priority to farmers from remotest areas in the district as regard the collection of inputs so that they are not disadvantaged due to the poor road network, especially when it rains. Some of the areas, the roads are bad when it comes on each November, December, so we want to make sure that these farmers access the inputs in good time. Places like Miloji, uh, Lalafta, um, Sonage, Kabipupu, those areas have been put on our timetable as uh, the first priority. And then uh, we're going to end up with those that are within the, 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 the radius of the district. John Mohanga reporting for Zanis Mufumba District, Northwestern Province. The news continues. The Department of Community Development in Mwansawombo District in Wapula Province has empowered 136 beneficiaries with goats under the Alternative Livelihood Interventions Program. This District Community Development Officer Elizabeth Msesa said the program 
is aimed at improving the livelihoods of communities through livestock production. More in the following report by Lewis Changwe. A total of over 400 goats have been handed over to 136 beneficiaries under the Alternative Livelihood Interventions Early Project in Monsawombo District. The goats have since been vaccinated and tagged to protect them from diseases and easy identity. District Community Development Officer Elizabeth Msesa now explains the purpose of the program. The official handover of uh, goats to 133 beneficiaries across four, four seawalks in Mwansawombo. These beneficiaries are entitled each uh, to three goats. The, the rule is that once they receive these goats, when they put to birth, these people will be able to pass on these gifts to other beneficiaries. So the intention of uh, this uh, program is that uh, we empower these beneficiaries with goats, then we, the outcome will be improvement of uh, their livelihoods. The beneficiaries are thankful to government and have promised to take good care of the animals. <laughs> Lewis Changwe, Zanis, Monsabombwe, Luapra Province. More than 36 cooperatives in Pemba District have been imparted with entrepreneurship skills by the Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprise Development in collaboration with the Cooperative College. Southern Province Principal Cooperatives and Entrepreneurship Development Officer Benjamin Vula explained that the training was targeted at cooperatives that benefited from the Constituency Development Fund CDF and the Farmer Input Support Program FISIP so as to promote a mindset change tailored towards business and entrepreneurship. Details in the following report. As government continues to empower cooperatives and clubs, one of the challenges that cooperators and SMEs have been facing is the lack of entrepreneurial and business management skills, especially when it comes to utilizing the Constituency Development Fund, CDF. To address this challenge, the Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise Development has embarked on a training program for cooperators with the goal of changing their mindset and helping them run their enterprises with a business approach. In Pemba, more than 36 cooperatives have been certified after attending a two-day training program conducted by the Cooperative College. Today we are in Pemba collaborating with the um, Cooperative College and indeed our objective was to train cooperatives, uh, clubs and also associations that have benefited from CPF and indeed it is from that point that we want them to use the resources uh, prudently and indeed also observe their bylaws. Cooperative College has been given the mandate to conduct the trainings countrywide. Uh, we are here training the operators on the cooperative management, entrepreneurship and governance. Our main focus was to change the mindset of cooperators from depending on mainly cooperatives as sources of inputs so that the cooperators take cooperatives as a business model. The cooperative college has the mandate to do outreach throughout the country. With the trainings provided, Pemba District Commissioner Bay Havenzo wants cooperatives to record positive results. The government is fighting poverty amongst our people through various empowerment programs. As a result, we must take these empowerments very serious and we would like that we sustain these programs. Chintunangamba, Zanis in Pemba, Southern Province. In education news following the conclusion of grade 7 examinations, Senga Hill District has not recorded 
any examination malpractices according to Education Standards Officer Chikongkolo Misapa. And the teacher union in Senga Hill District has warned teachers not to engage in any form of examination malpractice as the country continues with grade 9 and 12 examinations. More in the following report by Namso Kwebuembia. Examination malpractice gives lazy pupils undue advantage over hard-working pupils. To keep this, the Ministry of Education and its stakeholders in Senga Hill District have put up stringent measures to keep cheating during examinations at all levels. In the 15 centres that we have monitored and we have not received any report concerning uh, leakages or where they are practicing uh, malpractice, we uh, wish the days, as we are remaining with just a day, the exams will run malpractice free and wishing our candidates to come to perform wonders at the end of it. And the labor movement has urged teachers to continue upholding professionalism. On the part of the forthcoming examinations for grade 12, that is on Monday next week, and later on the grade 9 examinations. I would like to urge my fellow educators out there to desist from any malpractice in the forthcoming examinations. It's better not to show a child or anything that we may do that will turn against us. So my colleagues in Sengayu district, I'm just cautioning you, no any union is going to represent you in such case. The District Education Standards Officer also gave an update on absenteeism, which has remained a challenge in rural schools. In some centers, we've noticed to say there are absenteeism due to some other factors, some dropped before they even entered into grade 7. Some thought of just repeating upon being noticed to say they are unable to read that's uh, on the unfortunate part 85 who, who were absent in the 15 schools that we monitored, which gives a 15% if you are to calculate. For Zanisi in Senga Hill, Namsokwe Wendia. Meanwhile, in Central Province, Provincial Education Officer Mianda Hamududu has warned teachers against engaging in malpractices. Mrs. Hamududu observed that examination malpractices erode learners' confidence and deprives teachers of academic integrity and ethical conduct. Still in education news, but this time on the Copper Belt province, over 5,000 girls have been sponsored by government under the Keeping Girls in School program at secondary school level in Lufuanyama district. Agripa Silumbwe now gives us more in this report. Government has continued with its program of providing financial assistance towards the promotion of a girl child education, and a symposium has been held in Lufanyama, where stakeholders highlighted the progress made on Keep Girls in School program being implemented in the district. Over 5,000 girls have been supported at secondary level in Lufanyama, and today the program is supporting girls at tertiary and skills training levels through the KGS tertiary education support. The program caters for all scholarship support package. Many participants want beneficiaries to understand the full value of Keep Girls in School program. In the past, girls who became pregnant in school left school while the boys actually continued. Because of that scenario, there came a time when it was actually discovered that uh, men were excelling in terms of education, leaving the women behind. And because of that, this program came into existence to ensure that girls are assisted. We have KGS today, that is keeping girls in school. There is no doubt educating girls is a way of eradicating poverty. It allows them to break the tradition cycle of exclusion and higher education can prepare women to take on roles of higher responsibility. Promotion of a girl child education is key in reducing gender disparities in various decision making positions in the country. Reporting, I'm Agrippa Silumboy. To wrap up the news, we take you to Southern Province, where Chief Giganta of Kalomo District says alcohol and drug abuse among the young people is a major contributing factor 
to low agricultural productivity in the region. Speaking during the Choma Alcohol and Drug Rehabilitation Organization Public Dialogue Forum on Alcohol and Substance Abuse, Chief Giganta said traditional leaders are concerned with the indulgence of young people in alcoholism instead of engaging in productive activities. Gift Banji now gives us the rest of the story. Alcohol and drug abuse has remained one of the major negative vices affecting the productivity of young people in society. Most young and productive youths in southern province are failing to contribute to national food production due to excessive beer drinking, a situation that has saddened Chief Chikanta of the Tonga people in Kalomo district. But why is government, municipality, Mazavuka municipality, even Choma municipality, can they sit together to say how do we stop that manufacturing of Morini Mukia there? In Imagwe. Those youth are the ones that are supposed to be productive in terms of agriculture. They are the ones who make sure that uh, all, all, all the instruments of farming are put in place and they are even operated. Now if most of them are involving themselves in alcohol and other substance abuse, it means production, agricultural production goes down. The head of state when on, uh, was on television saying as the uh, government has secured some market for maize. I think he mentioned about three countries. $8,500 per ton. When I did my arithmetic, I calculated the $500 times 22 kwacha per dollar. It gave me 11,000 kwacha. When I divide by 20 bar by 50 kg, it comes to 550 kwacha per 50 kg. That is a lot of money. Choma Alcohol and Drug Rehabilitation Organization and Youth Development Organization is working hard to help the affected youths. There are tens, there are hundreds, if not thousands of potentially productive people out there already in a state of belegede, meaning drunk to the point that they can cause harm to themselves and other people. Maybe we need to redefine the social happiness. Because even in your functions, when there is wind at your chiefdom, we see trucks of Molini Mukia coming to set camps to in order to make sure that people that come to celebrate are happy. Now it's difficult to do without alcohol. And you see very decent women, the way they struggle getting back home after attending a church wedding. Local authorities are determined to ensure young people are prevented from alcohol and substance abuse. The authorized age of taking alcohol is 18 years and above. And it's not just consumption of alcohol, even handling of alcohol. Someone under 18, or 18 years cannot go to a bar to buy alcohol. The percentage of uh, kachasu can range from between 20 to 70 percent uh, alcohol content in it. And we also have a challenge of now children also being involved in the issue of selling substances themselves, the illegal substances themselves or being used by adults to sell these substances in the community. Gifty Banji, Zanis, Inijoma, Southern Province. As we end the news, we take another look at the top stories. Scrap metal dealers advised to surrender military ordinances. Central Province Minister commissions neonatal annex. Namwala Council completes empowerment package under the 2023 CDF and Chief Giganta concerned with low productivity among youths. Thank you so much for watching the news. On behalf of the entire news production crew, my name is Henry Himonde. Until next time, it's goodbye. <laughs>